Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique Host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not nothing, you know, my day walk on. But I want y'all to make sure, I gotta say this, y'all need to like, subscribe, share us on all social media platforms, including Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, TikTok, you name it. And we're Boss Talk Podcast 101 on all platforms. Then also, let me tell you the most important thing, if you don't hear nothing else, you're gonna hear this one. <laughs> Patreon channel. That's where you need to go to see our full length interviews after a while. I haven't put a date on it, but it's coming up real, real soon. So if you want to see these full-length interviews, you got to go ahead and sign up for our, full, uh, our membership packages. See you there. Man, hey, man, you know, uh, we out here, man, in New York. Really, New Jersey, New York. We've been running around uh, over on uh, Times Square. We was in Brooklyn, you know, paying homage to uh, a big year. It was his 26th uh, year. Uh, it's been 26 years since he passed yeah, here uh, in New York. So we came up to, you know, celebrate his life. You know what I'm saying? But in the process of celebrating his life, I had to tap in with some real ones that I've been knowing Man, for going on 20 years, like these guys that I know, people be trying to understand the relationships that I have built uh, through this channel. Well, I'm old, but at the end of the day, I got some real stomp down players, man, that I rock with, been rocking with. It has nothing to do. It was before Boss Talk 101. Way these before. are people way before Boss Talk 101. But I got so much love in each city I go to because you got to give love in order to get love, man. Mm -hmm. So I stepped in and had to call my boy Dre, Andre mm -hmm. Boyce in the building, man. Stop playing. Y'all know him. Y'all seen him, man. If you're on Facebook, man, I ain't never seen nobody. This, this dude been working out hard for straight years. <laughs> Years, you know what I'm saying, man? How you doing, man? Man, um, simple. It's like this. We live in a social media age. And not that I'm competing against another guy, but um, the at my age, in, in the late 30s, in your late 30s, early 40s, if this was the 1980s or 90s, you could have a dad bod. You can't be 38, 39, 40 with a dad bod no more. These women ain't hearing that. Man, Am man. I lying? Am I lying? Am I lying? Yes and no. I ain't no. They know yes and no. So like <laughs> I said, you, these ladies are not, unless they are in a substantial relationship with a man over a certain amount of time, they're not, you can't walk up to no woman with your cameo missing in the top and a belly. That's the why reason you, why I this say is yes why you see no. men though the do reason, all these surgeries. The reason why I say yes and no, because I hate We don't when, get into that too. Mm -hmm. No, ahead. but I hate when people, and this is, this goes for any topic. Go ahead. Um, when people say, oh, black folks or women or men. Uh oh, I know where she's going with this. Not all women, <laughs> not all men. This is a wild, wild wor world. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Be more specific. Say, Listen. okay, say woman in Texas or say woman in such and such or woman you have encountered. Say those words. Uh, okay. Don't, 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 just, don't just label women or men or black folks or white folks. Okay, so I'll this is this is my retort to that because you like most I know you're gonna hate this like <laughs> most women hate generalities but the world you live in is based off generalities when you vote it is called a what a poll okay so they're measuring the bell curve what's inside the bell curve the ma the majority of the numbers right I, for the example, numbers of the people so who example, vote so for example if if you took a number of every person that one leg was three inches shorter than the other, mm -hmm. they would be at the tips of the bell curve. So that's called sample negligible. It is not even a, 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 a big sample size enough to affect the majority. Mm -hmm. So if we're naturally, I'm not saying all, intelligentsia or anyone that's educated understand you don't speak in absolutes, but you can speak in generalities because at the end of the day, if I walked into a room of 10 women and I wasn't what society today deems, even, I'm not even gonna say attractive, appealing. Yo, it's a cold day in, it's the a reason cold why day I say Christmas. that. The reason why I say that, because I always, I, when I normally speak, I always say, this is my opinion, um, or I always say, well, this is my experience with whatever I've been through Understood. with whatever, so forth, because I realize, yes, the world mm -hmm. runs on 
generality. 100%. But um, just like when you talk about voting and a poll, when you look at how many people vote compared to, and they're only taking a poll up according to who vote. 100%. When you look at how many people vote compared to how many people in the world, uh, you can't really still generalize it according to the world because a lot of people do not vote. A hundred percent. Okay. But once again, so, <laughs> we're talking about what, generalities is what our Western world runs off of. But once again, you're not speaking an absolute. Miss G- okay, how many <laughs> women, how many women do screen printing, videography, cook for her kids, work at a store, come home? I'm sure there are other women out there other than myself who do it. Hey, come on. Let me I'm just, sure yeah, there are. Yeah, I don't know them, but I, let me tell you. Yo, one thing, one thing I refuse. The point. A woman one thing I one no nah. one no 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 no. No, I see I see what you're getting at. Mm-hmm. But the way how I am, I mm-hmm. always tell people all the time. It's good when people think that you're the one and only part. I'm like, but there's no, no, there's other people out there who are how maybe m- just like you. So how who many do you the think? Same thing. So, so it, it's very, there you go. Yeah. Sample negligible. All right. Let me, let me, let me step in, you know, well, I hold on, but we're going to go back to that. Yeah. No, 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 we're going to go back to that. I want, I want, I want to make we sure we get back, to, back the to the basis of what we do here, man. Hey man, first of all, man, thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101, <laughs> stirring it up. Now, listen, thank you for having me, but we're going to go back to the essence because we're going to start this conversation the way we started the first one he asked me about my glasses way before it was cool so i'm giving him glasses that match his, his uh what? His actual outfit y'all see this when you, know you come up here man you come to jersey man it, see hey mama scott this happening all over the world hold on let me get them on Ooh, look at mama him. scott this happening all over <laughs> the world baby this boy that brought me these shades in here man now what exactly is these because i know i uh, got some on that's the uh dita mock fly blue flash i think those were like Ooh, 16 dita, those mock. dita mock fly blue flash that was 1600 mama scott, 1600 up here that. in New Jersey, man. Look, everywhere I go, they, they bless me, man. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, man. I feel real player right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I done got real fly. My <laughs> guy's in the building. I told y'all, man, when I move, I move with precision, man. Uh, Say, man, listen, man. Uh, thank you so much, brother. You know what I'm saying? For putting me on that level. Of course, man. Of course. Man, I just want to say, man, ever since me and you, man, locked in, man, it's mm-hmm. been a journey, man. Like, mm-hmm. from all the way back to the convertible birthdays. Convertible but but birth, I want to I I, I give it to Miss Jamaica because she she always sauce what? it up. Let's really let's find out who this is. Go ahead, yes, because I like to know you as a person. Yes, yes I've ma'am. I've met you. Yes, ma'am. And we know you as a business and so forth. And yes, we ma'am. know a little bit, uh-huh. but I want to dig down deep okay. down. Okay. Born and raised. Born and raised. Um, Patterson, New Jersey. Okay. I was born '80s baby. Um, '80s baby. Mom and dad was together from the time I came out the womb. Had two older sisters. Um, so you're the only boy? I'm the only boy. So spoiled brat? Never. Because I had two older sisters. So that can be... Yeah, y'all ladies got to have y'all way. So oh, I, I had two. Yo, okay, you want to okay. hear a story real okay, quick? Let me on. show you how it was, right? A mama's boy. No, I wasn't. But <laughs> let me show you how it was. For some reason, I like girls at a very young age, right? So... How young? I'm about to get into it, right? So, <laughs> so I'm like three, four years old. Okay. My oldest sister is nine years older than me. My second oldest sister is six. Mm-hmm. And my mom owns, my mom and dad own a three family house. So on the second floor, they rented, my mom rented out to her youngest sister who had a daughter, Keisha. So Keisha, Tasha, who's my sister, and Benita, who's my sister, used to jump rope in the front, right? Okay. So I'm a little kid sitting on the steps looking at these Puerto Rican girls next door jump rope. And you know, when you jump double dutch, women's. Yeah. But yeah. You know, I'm just like. <sighs> Uh-huh. And you know what they used to do to me? What's that? They used to, they used to deliberately wait till like my father would come home from work and Keisha we like, Uncle Duke, Andre over here cursing. I, was, I didn't even know what a curse was. I wasn't cursing. I was just looking at the women jump rope, but they didn't want me to be around all those girls. But they didn't realize I'm sitting there drooling. And what's funny is at that time, you we can't say this now, so I'm going to be very politically correct. But, you know, at that time, if you wanted to hang around girls as a little boy, you would call the specific, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Connotation yeah, 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 and yeah, denotation, yeah, yeah. right? So, they, Keisha used to be like, Andre cursing Uncle Duke. And he was, get over here, boy. And I, and I couldn't watch them jump double dutch, right? I used to like girls. Yo, I could tell you every crush I had on a girl from preschool to like my last day of high school. That's how much I like girls. I was like three or four years old. Like, How girls. old were you when you had your first girlfriend? 
17. I, listen, I was. So you've been liking girls for, from that young. Mm-hmm. Why you waited that long to get your first girlfriend? Uh, I'm about to. Can I go to the ocean on it? So, <laughs> since we we're talking about generalities, right? <laughs> um, I was the fat nerd. Oh, okay. So when you're a nerd, right? Generalities show that in preschool, in, in grammar school, in high school, I couldn't get a girl to go or whether on me, right? Because mm-hmm. no one wants to be with the nerd. Right. And I'm going to get into this later because one of my favorite books, which I won't name, teaches men about that. It teach men how women. <laughs> Why you won't name the book? <laughs> because certain because to be honest with you, Miss Jamaica, and you know this, not all information is for everybody. People can pervert it and use it for not. They don't they use it for manipulation and not for power. It's two different things. But it's a public book and it's out there, right? Yeah, but I ain't going to tell nobody the name of it. Okay, it's your choice. So the point I'm making is, in this book, mm-hmm. it teaches you that women have types. And okay. within types, there's archetypes. Mm-hmm. So for example, if you look at, and Ia tell you this, and I'm sure you know this, right? If you look at television, right? You had certain types and archetypes that women went for on these shows. Fonzie couldn't read, but he rode a motorcycle and had a leather jacket. And what would happen as soon as he entered the diner? Hey. Hey. Women mm-hmm. went crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Shaft was a, 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 a officer detective shooting people, locking people up, and then at the end of each scene would go home and make love to two women, right? Okay. Urkel would sit in Laura's window playing a ukulele singing, fall out the window, break his neck, and she'd be like, close the window. As soon as he turned to Stefan Urkel, the same person, what happened? Yeah, she's she chasing did. him. She's mm-hmm. chasing him. So, Miss Jamaica, okay. when, I, when I was the nerd, and I was in school, and I knew every answer to the question, girls like, fat Andre, shut up. You know, so that's what So, I, I have a question for you. And I have an answer, go ahead. <laughs> that's so, all. So, you say ladies, this and that and so forth. I do, I do say that, yes, ma'am. Aren't men the same way? As far as what? Have a type? Have a type. Miss Jamaica, I'm gonna say this. In no, front hold, of, on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me fix that. Yeah, go ahead. First. Yeah, you better go and fix um, that one. Go have ahead. a type for two different things. Have a type that they will settle down and be married to. That's the girl that they want to want to mm-hmm. um, have a relationship with. Mm-hmm. Then you have the man that have the type that you know what. You're a female. I get at you. I don't care what you are, who that's, you are, that's, whatever. That's gonna be most men. So you have the two different kinds. Yeah. So. Um, Mm-hmm. You don't have to be a nerd. You don't have to be fat, ugly, young, whatever for that type. Okay. But for the settling down type, they get more specific. Okay. Is that correct? Um, how can I give you? I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, if you could buy vagina at your local supermarket, most men wouldn't even be married or in a relationship. They don't. They don't want to deal with the headaches. That's just the truth. Well, I'm um, not. I'm not gonna go there with. with he ain't gotta with, go there. He was married. So see, and I can already, say, I'm listen. not gonna go there is because I already know. Uh, you know, I'm friends with Dre, and Dre been through a lot of different things with a lot and of I, different and I'll, women. And I'll get in that too. You know what I'm saying? But we ain't there yet. But yeah, I'm just saying it, but it's, it's things that make people <laughs> say certain things. Exactly. And I was gonna get into that too listen, because there's a reason why okay. he's the way how he is he, right he, now. He, listen, listen, no game, talking. Mr. Maker. No game, Mr. Maker. That goes without saying. There's the way you were raised, your geographical locale and the culture thereof is the reason exactly. why you are the way or you are. Or traumas that but, people went through. But. <laughs> Traumatization. But. Yes, it does. Because some people come from great households yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that's true. I came from a great household. And, you know, saw, you know. Let's get into that, though. Let's say, you say you were, you did come from a great household. Your mom and dad still together yeah. to they were, my, yeah. Me and my mother, as you know, when I had to step away from fashion, I changed my father diaper with my mother. Came home, changed them, washed them, yeah, got them in, sure you did. know what I'm saying? So, but this is my point. If you, okay, and I'm going to show you, I could look up a CNN, it's a CNN study right now that I just did my last show on last Sunday where we showed how men have fallen out of society because they can't even get women. They, they have okay, fallen hold on, out hold of on. society. Hold on, um, I thought it just came back to my head. <laughs> Go ahead, please. So, mm-hmm. 
Because I'm still going back into Go the ahead. Past. Yeah, man. We here. First time you had a girlfriend at 17. At 17. How old were you man, when I you had sex for the first man. time? 17. So you didn't even, nothing before that? I Listen. I told you it was it, women because, was but, not but checking. You said for women me. were not checking for you, but I always say there's always somebody out that here. Every for, pot got a top. Yes, is, is there me. is. <laughs> I promise you. It, no, but you see, Yo, hold on. Crazy. But hold on, hold on. Yo, the reason why I'm saying that, just like how, okay, example. <laughs> The Yo, you were crazy. no hold on when you were younger you said yes, you were a chubby yes ma'am nerdy kid yes ma'am still am a nerd who was probably looking at the girls the Puerto Rican girls and no all I was looking at every, yeah, everyone all, all the girls yes ma'am um were you looking at the fine girls or you were just looking at every girl um if you meet a person on the street who hasn't eaten will he look at the bologna sandwich just like he look at the steak he hasn't eaten so I was looking at every woman. <laughs> You didn't care. I didn't care. But Men no, don't care. But none of those women, no matter size, looks, anything, was just not looking your way. They wasn't looking my way. You know what's funny? I, I told E about this, too. I, I told you one time. You don't remember. But I remember one of the funniest things I deal with to this day, right, is I used to be so religious, right? I used to oh, be man. in the Bible, right? And I used to- Did you I used to, go I up in church? On, yeah, I did. I okay. couldn't wait to go to Sunday school to answer every question. And I'll forget, the men and the women that were my peers, slightly older, slightly younger, were, used to chastise me for knowing the Bible. And do you know most of them are now ministers? It, wow. it boggles my mind. Like, I'll just be like, yo, I couldn't wait. So like I always tell people, when I, when I was fat, skinny was in. When I was skinny, fat was in. When I had waves, everybody had braids. When I switched to the braids, everybody had waves. It was just, that's, that's how it be sometimes. Wow. And that's fine. That's fine, you know. But honestly, I would have looked. I would have <laughs> took Aunt Esther when I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just, you know, I, you know, just being one that, that really have, have really, I want to tell you thank you for all the times when I picked up the phone and called you. I always answer. And I, you we always, always, and we you, used to talk three, four in the morning. We talked three, four in the morning, whenever. Yeah. But the thing is, you always had something that you would share with me, whether it was clothing or whatever, man, that gave me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, drive and push me. I've been in the business for right at 20 years, but mm -hmm. it, it was people like you that God put in my life mm -hmm. that helped me to understand, you know, where I was going. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you realize that, but mm -hmm. a lot of times them phone calls, man, man is I what kept me it, going, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, um, there's a saying amongst me and a couple of my friends, and I always say, man, strong men make stronger men. Yeah. If, if, if I'm here, you know me, I don't ask for nothing. So if I'm nah. here to um, help you in any way, listen, if it comes back, it, I don't believe in anything. So I don't believe in karma, I don't believe in that. But I do believe that, listen, if I can help, because I, the difference between us and every other ethnicity and nationality is that they practice nepotism. Yeah. And we don't. Yeah. You know, so for me, even in where I was at at the moment, a lot of people didn't know what I was going through. I had lost my hair because of what I was doing with my dad. Yeah. And I always tell people during that pandemic, one day I looked in the mirror and I was like, yo, my hair coming back. Wow. And I said, oh. They should have never let me <laughs> Right? Because it was just like, I became a different person. Um, and listen, I done been everywhere from Frisco to Maine all the way to Spain, from the Big Apple to the Pineapple. You know what I'm saying? Been everywhere but the electric chair. So no one, when we had these talks, remember, you used to put me on the phone with people. And I, I, used to would, go, I always put you on the phone because and I used you to would, slice and the reason, them. But the reason I would do that is because a lot of times, A, they was trying to understand business. Right. Or B, they was trying to understand apparel, you know, right, different, right, right, different right. things about apparel. Or we used to, used you, to put them on the phone and talk to me about God. About and all, God, yeah, but whatever. But the thing is, you would always go there. You know, you speak multiple languages. I you, used to speak, yo. You I very, to, yo. You're very diverse. And, and culturistic, that, uh, you know, differences in, in different uh, nationalities. Yep. And and those things were things that I, I was like, man, that's that's dope that you done been to all these different countries, yep. venturing into all these different business moves, yep. and you you worked here in in uh, New York, yep. and 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 you you've done some crazy stuff with the apparel <laughs> business. And I just you know when I see you and I look at your run, you know, I, you can't deny the fact that you one of those guys. Yeah. I, listen, um, I was lucky. Um, I was lucky and I was very unlucky at the same time. 
you know, now I'm a little bit different to where I have just one general focus really is which is just get to the money. And I have a number in my head. If I can reach that at the end of the year, I'm good. Like I'm really gonna make a decision. Do I even wanna live in the United States any longer? Or should I just go to Europe and be butt naked on the beach eating grapes? I want to talk about just the first, mm -hmm. the challenges we faced, man. Coming to the cop show when we first linked up. Mm -hmm. It was always about the glasses. It's funny, you gave me a That's pair of glasses That's why I put the today. glasses on, because like, like we're having boy, our first conversation. Listen, man, this boy, listen, man, listen. Y'all don't understand. When we first met, mm -hmm. we was, this is what brought us together. We was fly. Glad, we was yep, doing our we glasses was, yep, thing. Yep. We were wearing our shades. And, and you know, the thing was, I just look at the way the way you know me and you done grown throughout the years, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. what? Let's talk about how you first got into the apparel business. Oh, that's good. Listen, so listen, so I was. We're gonna revert back. It was 1993. Okay, right. So anybody who knows me knows that I was a sports fanatic. Okay, even as a fat nerd, I love sports. So what happened was. I started to get into clothes in 93, okay. no, 94, it was 94, right? So now, what was people starting to venture into? Sports apparel, so this is when the Fab Five became popular, Chris but, Webber. But Dapper Dan was still doing his, uh, his oh, yeah, that was, too. But you know, that's crack era. I'm a little baby at that time. Exactly. That's crack era, so 94, So you, what, what, exiting, what, what year did he start and when all that was transpiring with it, him? And, according to my former business partner, the one I told, right before we went on camera, his name, I ain't gonna say his name on camera, but he he told me like it was 78 until really? like 88. It was like 78 until about right 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 after Mike Tyson lost to Buster Douglas, which was like 91, 90, yeah, something like yeah. that. That's when Dapper Dan was like rocking. So you came right after that. I man. came into 90, 94, right? Now peep this. And what year did you lose your weight? I lost weight in the summer of 97. I went, quick story, I was, I had, I got weighed by the school nurse the, the last semester of high school of my sophomore year. I'll never forget it. She was like, 242 pounds, five foot nine. I was like, what? Wow. So that, so from May, cause that was May, so May, June. So that, it was like a three week period. I went to my aunt, my mother, oldest sister, she used to make cabbage and I love cabbage. And I kept hearing about this cabbage diet, right? So I said, yo, just, I, I ate cabbage for three straight weeks. And I mm. think I lost about 15 pounds, right? So I was probably about 220. <sighs> and I was sad, like, I ain't gonna, I don't believe in, I ain't gonna say that because I know people suit up. But I, I didn't, I was in a, a, what you would call a depression, right? And I told my mother, I wanna go to granddaddy house in North Carolina. So my grandfather lived in a very small town on the, on the outskirts of a hosky. It's called Rich Square. It probably got one traffic light, a, a mule, and a <laughs> and I know that's backyards, right. right? And, welcome, um, to te welcome to Texas, yeah, that's how we so do it. I went down there, right? Now mind you, the day my mother bought the flight for me to go, cause it's such a small city, you have to fly into Virginia Beach and drive two hours into um, uh, Rich Square. So I didn't eat that whole day, I'll never forget it. Went to the airport, flew, landed Virginia Beach. It's not a long flight, it's what, an hour, 15 minutes? And then um, my grandfather and this guy named Reverend Willie, somebody, I think it was Reverend Willie, <laughs> picked me up, right? So we in the car, boom, hungry, they didn't eat, right? Get into his house, starving, and he used to have a caretaker because my, my grandfather had a tree that fell on his lower lumbar, so he wasn't walking the same, but now at this point he's fully caned and walker, right? Okay. So I said, Sarah, uh, Miss Sarah, I'm hungry. So she was like, she just kind of like ignored me. And um, my grandfather said, like, you hungry? That's how he talked, <laughs> real husky voice. You hungry? I'm like, yeah, look at the pot over there. I opened up that pot, it was a squirrel. And that's mm. when I knew I was gonna lose a lot of weight. That's <laughs> <time>. <laughs> I knew I was going to lose a lot of weight that summer, and but, I did. Wow. But get back into the Dapper Dan story. You okay, were, go ahead. Y'all were talking about Dapper mm -hmm. Dan and mm -hmm. all of that, so mm -hmm. go ahead. So I just want to go back into it to where I want to basically point out the fact of how we were, we had passed Dapper Dan. And right, you it was 94. Coming, it was 94, 94 right? And so, we were coming into your, 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 your getting into So let me point. paint that picture. In 94, you had the Fab Five. You had Chris Webber, Jalen Rose. So they were like, 
our trendsetters because we never seen sports like that. Baggy shorts, black sneakers. They were brash. They brought bald heads. This one, the bald head look was in. I did all of that, right? To the point where, so I wanted jerseys. I said, I'm going to be different. And I'll never forget going. And I was chubby going to grammar school with tight jerseys on, not supposing to wear them because I was out of shape, right? And I started buying sneakers. I remember I used to, so my mother said just like this. I'll never forget it. My mother said, me and Duke can buy you this stuff. But you got Jonathan, who was my cousin. My mother took in my her her youngest brother's son from Arkansas. And she was like, I'm not buying both of y'all that stuff. She said, you better figure out how to get that stuff. Not nah, here. So I stopped eating school lunch, saved that money, and I started doing kids' homework. Took all that bread and then started to uh, basically um, buy all this stuff. And that's how I got into it. So by the time I became a freshman in high school, and this is, you know, I'm glad you asked me that. I was wearing brands that nobody was wearing. I was just a nerd, so I wasn't considered cool. But you know what's crazy? My freshman and sophomore year, when I was wearing those brands, I didn't even, it would, It took to my junior year to see all of them wear it. And then I was like, I thought, y'all was laughing at me when I wore FUBU, when nobody had FUBU. Wow. Y'all laughed at me when I wore Triple Five Soul. Y'all laughed at me when I wore Echo. This one, Echo was like, they were laughing at me. I remember when I first wore FUBU, there's like fat, universal black, they used to, they used to just make up a different acronym every day to pick on me, right? <laughs> so, what happened was, it was a store in my hometown of Patterson named Carlos Shoes. So you had two brothers, Carlos Jr. and you had Rolando Calzada. And I used to always talk to Rolando. And I used to say, bro, if you just give me a chance, man, I know I can, like, now I mind you 16 years old, and he's like, eh, he's the, and then one day he said, yo, young blood, come here. Yo, I'm gonna give you a shot. I'm gonna have you work in my store. And then within a year, not even a year, six months of being in his store, I said, yo, this is 98, right? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm a, I am said, don't pay me for three weeks. Mm. I said, send me to Vegas with you for the magic. Now, you know, 98, this when magic mm, was, was doing magic, mm -hmm. right? He was like, I never heard someone say that to me. He said, you 17 years old Being so and young. you gonna give me mm -hmm. your money so we can go to magic. I said, yo, boom. Three weeks. What year was that again? 98. 98. So, so, yo, I was, I'll was. i never get my first one, right? So, mind you, I'm 17 years old, writing orders for Nietzsche, Pele Pele, uh, Mecca USA. That's why all to this day, even when you was at, when you saw me in Atlanta, you noticed all the other brands fucked with me because they yeah. remember me as a buyer, as a little kid. Yeah. So, he was like, I was like, yo, you know, send me. And yo, from then... And let me tell you, I can say this now. <laughs> so I always had like this, you know how my voice is a little heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was 16, 17 years old, dating these 30 year old sales reps. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even know my real age, man. I, I used to, listen, I was like a kid in the candy store. Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah, like yeah. I told Miss Jamaica, I didn't get. I couldn't get a girl up until that age, right? So once I got into the game, so when you got in the game, you were not faithful because you said girls after girls after girls. So you didn't stick with that first girl for very long. I was a man of the Lord. I, I just took. I was King Solomon. I just went and tried to get every woman I could. Wow. Yeah, because you were hurt for all them years that you couldn't get one. No, I, I remember. I would, let me tell you how silly I was. I literally used to pray to God and said, "If you can just." Get <laughs> I used to pray at night like a, like like I you see the picture yeah, yeah on the nightstand like yo could you so when I finally got into the game you couldn't tell me nothing but why would you do that or why wouldn't you because I'm a man I was full of testosterone I was young so you're telling me young men yes. cannot be faithful and stick to one girl and have a girl a hundred point nine eight two percent yes. I don't agree with that. Listen, I'm going to do a show. If y'all here on Sunday, if y'all don't leave, I want y'all to join the show. I will, especially you, Miss Jamaica. I'm going to do a show <laughs> called Access Breeds Excess. 
What's the name of your show too? Let's, let's uh, it's called the Relationships Debates and Dialogue Podcast. Me and my man DJ Obsession. We we just be busy. Like he's working on a show right now for network television. So there's been times where we had gaps between our show. And sometime um, I would do this thing called Andre at the Dark where I would get all of my friends and we would talk about different relationship type dynamics. Like I did one where we did dating in the church versus dating in the streets, right? Mm -hmm. I did one, um, how much money should a man have before he dates for commitment? Wow. I did, um, I, my, my favorite one that I did, which is just recently, is She Don't Care Part 1 or 2. I'm teaching men. Yeah, you sound like you would love that. I'm teaching men. Stop trying to impress these women. Get yourself straight. And like I always tell people, when I wake up every morning, it's one rule. Richer, wiser, stronger. How can I get physically in better shape? How can I get mentally sharper? And how can I get some more money? I call that the female inflation package. I agree. <laughs> okay. I agree with I agree with the fact that each individual man man or woman um, need to wife. need to get <laughs> themselves straight because they have to. The reason why I said that um, men or women because just mm -hmm. like how you say you were telling men this, mm -hmm. I was also telling females that. Whereas mm -hmm. you get yourself straight because in order for you to get yourself straight mm -hmm. and know how to love yourself, then mm -hmm. you know how to treat a man. You know exactly what you want, and even then you still. Don't always know exactly what you want. You know exactly what you want for that moment in time, that year, that whatever. Because as mm -hmm. we get older, mm -hmm. certain things change, and you you know your goals change. Hopefully, one hundred percent. Hopefully, it goes higher. One hundred percent. You know what I mean. So that's why I said for that moment in time. But you need to first. Um, especially if you went through trauma when you were younger or different things. Um, maybe you saw your mom never kept a man and mm. different men come in and out of the house or you were raped or molested or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you bring in and as much as you're searching for love, that's the reason why you end up in all these different relationships. Right. You first have to heal yourself because you can't find healing through anybody else. I you think have one to, the, in your mind, make that up for yourself. I will give you, I will give you this. Um, me, <laughs> me being a man of the Lord and talking to a certain amount of women, I, I do give you this. It is a lot. It is hard for women that has been abused early to recover. It's super hard. But not impossible. I, no one said impossible. But it's, it's hard. I want to get back on subject. <laughs> yeah. I'm not for the mess with y'all. Nah, uh, yeah. I, I want to hear about your. your I want to. I want to go oh, back. Okay, to, so get back to that. So I want to get back so to when you, right when, back you get, to, when you get to magic. So and, we got and, the magic right, and I could tell you. Let me show you how deep I go. So I remember you have a Nietzsche. So a Nietzsche was Adam, Lando, Eric Walker, Tony Shellman, and Evan. I'm, I'm, the reason why I'm giving you these names, I'm showing you how it branches out into okay. other brands right you had mecca usa and at the time mecca was um it was tony magnetic it was um it was what you call too um I'm, before i forget he just uh pabon phil pabon who un unfortunately just left us Man, i think about a year ago um a little bit over a year ago and you had who is now one of considered one of the the Grand Masters, which was Don Juan and his brother Emmett. Okay. Right? And so they branched off for a second and did Fat Farm. And then they branched off after that and then they did Academics. This is where you get Academics from, right? Which eventually gave you PRPS, right? So then you look at, um, so what's another brand? Because like, if you look at the names I gave you from a Nietzsche, if you take Evan out of it and Tony is what gave you Parrish. Okay. Right? So and I think Eric for a little bit too, maybe maybe not. Um, so when you look at academics, you got Dante Allen, um, uh, Scott Sasso. Scott gives you ten deep, as Dante gave you what gave me my first shot in manufacturing with him and Jamie, which was Gilliard. Yeah. And then yeah. Gilliard gave you Omar, even though they had other brands, Omar and Dennis. Omar having a store in Virginia called See My Wealth, which he was at that time partners with a rapper I won't name because he probably don't want me to say that. And then um, you have Dennis who owned Crooks and Castles. Yeah. You yeah, see how yeah. all that brand off from yeah, that? Yeah. So that's just a little like synopsis of like how, yo, I was, this was before I was into design, 
right? I was such fans of all of them. I could tell you, like, my man Dante would have to watch certain movies to get inspired. I'm not going to say what type of movies. Then I remember my man Dennis used to be like, he's always had to, he's always designed with his shoes off with his feet like that, like crossed over. Right? Yeah. Everybody's man, different. And right. And then my man Alan will always be sketching Simpson caricatures. And they didn't realize, like, I was just soaking all of that in, right? I used to just love that, right? And then after that, things happened. Gilyard was successful, but it, it lost it, it. Certain things happened within that company. And then I was in limbo, and that's when I met D Map in Vegas. And when he was designing 8732. 8732. And, now um, let's stop there. Yeah, I, I want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. 8732 DMAP. I, I, this was something that I, I, I put on a pinnacle when I started to tell people about DMAP because I felt like that was a big accomplishment. So he was doing 8732, and this was Young Jeezy's brand, right? Yep. And so Young Jeezy pretty much had, I don't even know, I'm going to get that story from whenever I get with DMAP. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to get him on the show. I'm but, a, when y'all do it, I'm going to go my guy. I'm going to go down with you. Yeah. When, when we do, do that, it yeah. cause we going. It'll probably be within months. Give me about two or three months, cause we need to we need to go down there. Yeah. Um, but we, we we just basically what I want to say is that was the pinnacle moment for me. Um, but I didn't when we, when I first met you, I didn't know none of this stuff. Yeah, even, that's why I'm giving you the whole breakdown. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so eighty seven thirty two. How did you feel about the brand? Yo, first? I'll never forget. I was in Philly selling to a store called City Blue. Okay, and he was buying a gang of Gilliard, and I was looking up, and I was like. And I seen this collection, and and it and it's talk like how I'm a slick talker when it come to clothes, right? It's so like even my shirt, it says God, greed, and glamour, yeah. meaning money, hoes, and clothes, right? Just another, uh, it's just another way of saying it, right? Money, God, greed, what everybody works off. Glamour is like the fly stuff that we get once we get both, right? For sure. So um, he said he had this collection with jets on it. But it was well done. He mixed like Greek art motif with flighter jets and they said, we fly together. I said, oh. I said, this man talking Andre talk. So when I first realized who he was, I was looking for him up in New York and then somebody said, yo, he down in Atlanta. Yo, he left, he doing convertible bird. And I was like, I like that name though. And then me and him kept, you know, going back you and like forth. You like the convertible bird? Now. I like the name. And then um, I thought it was V E R T T until it was I learned it was C B E R T T right C Bert. So when we got on it, me and him was just like boom. We we understood it. Like how did you end up linking with him to even develop the brand? Because I told you, I told you he. We just kept going at it, and I you know at that time I was still a, I was a young man of the Lord at the time. I was going down to Atlanta and just laying hands on women and just you know doing the <laughs> Lord's work and. Um, I would sometimes hit him up. You know what I'm saying? I always to be, man, Atlanta used to be. <laughs> but, Atlanta was uh, a different type of you know, Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta yeah. Listen, in my prime. Was that the BMF days? It was. It was right. It was shortly after. Shortly Gil after. Gilyard, when I was in Gilyard. Matter of fact, I, true story. I remember when it was it was me, Jameek, this guy named D. Murph, and a couple other cats. And we did the, listen, matter of fact, another six degree of separation. We did something called the Dirt. You can look it up. The Dirty Awards with Radio One. Okay. That was us. We sponsored that. That's how you get the BT Hip Hop Awards. Wow. Because once we stopped doing it and fell off with it, is how they they use the same place even for the BT Awards. So the same same arena. The same arena. So what's funny is is that I we had a party at a one question. of those clubs. Go ahead, man. Because. Well, sometimes when people hear certain information, especially if they don't know it, some mm -hmm. people are going to go searching. Yeah, they could. But could they find this information anywhere? Yeah, you could look up Dirty Awards right now. You probably still see it. Okay. I, I don't Dirty know. Awards. It was, it was where, was it at? where was it at? It was in Atlanta at the convention center. And and that's where they it was. Held the we did the first one, 2005, was it five? We did the, no, 2006. And two, it was either 2005, 2006 or 2006, 2007. And when did BT start? BT been started, but what I'm saying, the hip hop awards hip -hop is when awards. Radio One let go the Dirty Awards. Then okay. you've seen the hip hop awards come. Okay. Because it was the same format, mm -hmm. same format. It was just like hardcore South hip hop, and everybody was there. And why did they let go of the Dirty Awards? I don't know. Maybe they they couldn't get the sponsorships because we co-sponsored it with Radio One. 
Oh, they wore yeah. our clothes. We we did all the the radio ads with them. Everything. And so going back to that story, I remember I forgot. I think it was Club Miami, something like that. In in in, in the A, we pulled up to our party. Yo, they had the whole front Lambo Ferrari out. We couldn't even get into our B- BMF had the whole thing just like, and we didn't say nothing because we knew what it was about. We was just like, all right, well, I started acting like it was my car. Wow. But that was a true story. Um, Have you met um, the guys in BMF? I, we, like I said, that day, we saw them. Matter That's of fact, it. Okay. Matter of fact, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to get into the story because I know it's some, some other stuff behind that. But yeah, one time, Blue Da Vinci came to our office on some stuff. That's all I'll, I'll say like that. And we'll just Okay, I just that. didn't know if, cause you know how that's the first time you've seen them at that time, but people tend to, you know, mesh and, you know, create relationships. I didn't know if you created yeah, a relationship you know after what, that. You know what, what happened was, Miss Miami, are you talking about, I'm a youngin' at that time, right. right? So, and another thing was, was that most of us was from up here. Mm-hmm. The only person that was really in that life down there was D Murph. I gotta okay. give him that credit. Like he was in that mix of Atlanta. He was between the Bronx and Atlanta, the Bronx and Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So, but we knew because like, don't forget when you land at Hartsfield and you drive, I forgot that highway, you see the world is being met. You saw that billboard right there, mm-hmm. right? So you know what it's about, um, but neither here nor there. So um, yeah, so that's just a small synopsis of where you saw a lot of my stuff branched off into getting back into like 2009 when me and Matt first became real, real tight. I just believed in his style because me and him. So if you put your glasses back on when me and him first started talking, meaning E, my, my brother CEO over here. Yeah, I put right, my glasses back on. I, the, way he, the way he came to me is because I had on Alpinas. Yeah, and Matt Dita. had on Alpinas. Alpinas, and Matt. Yeah, that's what on, I'm rocking right now. No, you got on Dita. Oh, but well, Matt, I, Matt, I thought it was Alpina. <laughs> no, Matt had you on. You know, you something else with these glasses, bro. Yeah, I, you know, but they Matt, be expensive as hell. Matt, you, you better know? believe it. <laughs> Matt had on Alpinas, and I had on Alpinas. But Matt wear prescription sunglasses, and I don't. Right, so. So if you look at maps, it looked like glasses, but by mine being sunglasses, it looked so. So he was like, "Man, those, those bitches hard, oh, man." You know, that's how that's how he talked. Man, those bitches hard, oh, man. And I was like, "Yeah, man, good looking." And then he's like, "Man, you know, I got these little cheap ass massages." Oh man, but those, damn! But those, them alpinas is hard. No, man, they and gonna lie to you. We here would have been here would have just yeah. We would talk for hours about we talk that, about, man. We'll go back and forth about. Whether it be, it could be glasses, it could be Rick Ross and Lil Wayne. I remember that big, we had a big old controversy about that. I was we, in LA with yo. <laughs> True story, he didn't even realize. I was in a studio with some cats that rock with both sides. Yeah. Mm. And I'll never get, I had to leave. That's why I said, yo, E, hold on. I had to leave the room so they didn't hear my opinion. He didn't even know that. I, I didn't was, know that. I was dead smack in Studio City at a studio where they were at. And I was like, no, you wrong about that, bro. You wrong about that, bro. I never, so, never. Hey, we were going crazy. in. I think you was the Rick Ross side, wasn't you? Yo, I th- and crazy. I was a little Wayne crazy at the time. I wasn't trying to hear nothing you was talking about. Yep. I, and, and I think, you know, the thing is, man, that's iron sharp and iron, man. Iron sharp is iron, so, bro. So, of course, we both made our valid opinions. But one thing we did was always state what we felt. And I think that's what me and do. We're going we gonna to put our chest out and, and let you know, nah, man, I don't agree with that. But but it, we really just, just really upping each other, you know, trying to figure out who, mm-hmm. what detail do you know. You saying this, but what you got to go with it. Mm-hmm. And after that, we get off to it. We want to know what you... I remember we were trading verses because I said, yo, Ross at that time was in his pocket. Sure was. And the reason why I said that because at that time I was still hanging hard with Cool from Cool and Dry. I used to really hang yeah, hard with Yeah, you was him. hanging with so them I, during so that time. I, so I was like, yo, bro, I got to go with Ross because I used to hear things that yeah. y'all didn't hear and I was just be like, yo, Ross, bro. I used to really be like, you know, I think, you know, and I'm not doing this like kissing old, you know, that's my man. I don't speak to him like I, you know, but like, I, yo, cool to me is still top five. I you wanna know, know how, you, know how, how you met them because you- Yo, you, Gilyard, man, I used to, I told you, I was young and fearless. So Cool and Dre, were they both produced. But I never right? was really with Dre. I Just was only around Dre cool. twice. I was around Cool, heavy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but, I st- yo, cool to me, man. I used to, yo, I used to say, cool, yo. You Now, mind you, they're a tandem, but I'm not taking one from the other. But to me, they're, they're the most slept, even though they're stars, 100%. They're star stars. But, but 
Yo, you talking about one of the more not really brought up in the conversation of like sound changing music. Yo, I'm telling you. They they you know, to this day they still they still up there. You know what I'm saying? You know my my favorite will always be Manny. That's why I said I, I know it, and and I, I, we gonna get into that because you know I've been hanging out in New Orleans, man, and I've been with K. I shout to K. L. C. Hold on, side note: How do y'all both like New Orleans? I love it. Yeah, I, it's, that, y'all gotta be. I guess that's a South. No, thing. no, no. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I can't take New Orleans. No, I, I love it. I'm not. What you mean? Not, what, what you I'm mean? Saying, this is what I'm saying. I have a problem with seeing our people in poverty. You know what I'm saying? I hate it. Now, poverty is up here. Trust me. I seen it. But. Nigga, <laughs> I seen it. Nigga, I just, I've been walking through it all day, nigga. Don't where, where, wrong. where at? I was, I've been around it. I was in Brooklyn. I was what in Manhattan. What Brooklyn? I was just, well, we went over to where well, I Well, Manhattan, you're going to see homeless people. I seen at one trying to follow us and chase us. I had to check him. Jesus. I'm looking around like, nigga, you better quit following me. Yeah, New York is, uh, but the thing about New Orleans, man, you just see, nobody, like. Nobody likes to see our own people. People, but you see it, but you got to understand, you're talking about almost I'm 80%. You, 80%. But, but what I'm telling you, okay, what mm-hmm. I'm telling you that I love, I mm-hmm. love the fact that. I love the culture. I love the culture. I love I the love, music. I love the music. I love the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, that's one thing they have. You can't tell them that. Even the poverty. food. Even the food. The food is all amazing. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the reason why I say that, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. everywhere is different. Everybody is different. So forth. Correct. Everybody's seen different levels of poverty. Because uh, even of <laughs> because the reason why I'm saying that. Go ahead. Um, growing up in Jamaica. Jamaica is a third world country yes, and so 100%. forth. Mm-hmm. But... Growing up there, I didn't really think of poverty. I didn't see poverty, especially right. being a child, because you know you don't parents, recognize it. Not, right? Parents did not. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They don't put you, their kids in the, your business. You mm-hmm, know what? Mm-hmm. Like my mom would tell me growing up now, like I asked her certain questions, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and she was like, "I would never." I felt like I was rich. You understand what I mean? I but what I you're was saying. not. But what I'm saying is that unless you're a child, that's right. Going for days hungry because I have no food right. and you know so forth, which I never experienced that. Right. You know what I mean? But people can look at a f- whole country just like we talk about generalization right, right. and say it's a it's a poor country. Right. When they go there, and I remember a person from here saying this to me, mm-hmm. and she went down there, and you know, up here people wear flip flops or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. You, you pay a dollar for it, whatever. Mm-hmm. And some people call it shower shoes, whatever. Mm-hmm. And she went down there and she's like, oh my God, somebody was just so happy to get those sandals I gave them, just like that, the flip right, flops. Right. And you know, how they acted like it was so much, but for people here, it's like, that's just a dollar, like that's nothing. But again, not everybody. So mm-hmm. being from down there and you get that, people like anything new. Mm-hmm. Number one, no matter mm-hmm. what it costs, I didn't care about money. I didn't care about fashion. As oh, in, like growing right. up as a kid, I was just homeboy. Right. Me, like I didn't care about brand name. I just mm-hmm. care about okay, is it cute? Mm-hmm. Does it fit? It looks good. I'm good. Right. You know what I mean? And I was that nerdy chubby kid growing up. A mm-hmm. lot of people who've known me as I got older mm-hmm. be like, "That no, you're lying." Because they see me now, right. but people who know me, who are my Facebook, whatever, and be like. Oh yeah, I remember you, tomboy. You were like a, you know, like a right. little boy, but I was chubby. Right. Um. So when you were saying the things that you were saying about mm-hmm. you being nerdy and chubby, I right. resonate with that. Right. Because it was when I remember before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I went actually went to a guy and told him I had a, a crush on him. Okay. When I built up the nerves, I was okay. a teenager. Okay. And he looks at me, and I was chubby. Okay. He said, "I like your friend." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That crushed me, of course. Of course. But later on in life, when I lost weight, I realized that all those people who, you know, felt that way mm. was at my door knocking. Mm. Church. <laughs> so I understand your philosophy with certain things. You should. It's, I'm doing the work of the Lord. Um, but look, this is what I want to say. When you live, uh, the United States of America is an aspirational, hyper individual, individualistic country. And what I mean by that is, right? So poverty affects you different when you're in poverty and see a SL500 drive past you. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the woods and there is no SL500, right? Mm -hmm. Your dynamic is different. But imagine it's just like this. If you're a child 
And you might have a two parent working home, but they don't have like what you call discretionary or excess income, right? Mm -hmm. But then the next kid in your class got all the sneakers, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what's promoted. And it's a different mentality of poverty once you see both, mm -hmm. right? And that's what I'm saying. So for example, one of the like cities that I love are also cities that in certain areas, you just be like, man, like Philly, certain parts of Philly, you see it, you just be like, man, New Orleans, and I love New Orleans. I lo listen. Any t my first time in New Orleans, I thought I was in another country. Cause the, first of all, the dialect will have you going like, "What? Like that? My father? Yo, who? My father? Yo, father? Like you know what I'm saying? We about to tear down your hood. Like I used to love that. Like I didn't know what they were saying, but I used to love it. I wanna, I wanna, I just wanna ask you about this Manny Fresh. Uh, I love Manny Fresh. Uh, bro. Just, just what made was it? What particular time? And because he has phases, mm -hmm. uh, what particular mm -hmm. song? What particular? I can tell thing you right now that made you like, like, man, this guy's something different. Is when. So I didn't like them when they first, when I first heard, whoa, even though that's like my favorite song now. When I first heard, whoa, 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 King Masabe, yeah. big, big, big ball in this, my heart. I didn't like that first. My cousin, Jonathan, when I heard the, the aforementioned Jonathan, I told you about before, he's from Arkansas, even though he'd been living out here for 10 years by the time the song came out, he used to play it. I was like, man, that's shit. But when Juvie came out with uh, Follow Me Now, when you heard that do 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 I want me a meal and see just how it feel. Don't worry about no bills, negotiating. I was like, oh! I was like, because in hip hop, you didn't hear that Mexican chord and that sound. And I'm like, a black man did that shit? You know what I'm saying? And when he did, um, yo, know, it's just so many records, like how he used to switch up the sound. Like when he did on Lil Wayne, Get Off the Corner. It's not like one of my favorite songs, but if you zone out on the beat, you'd be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Um, his, uh, the Big Time is, uh, what you call album, the Hood Rich album, he got busy on. I know Jazzy Faye did some records up there, but that was one. But I could tell you my top Manny records. Um, front, back, do what he did for T.I., even though that was a remake of Pimp C's uh, version, the original version. I loved um, boom, boom, clap for, for Jeezy. And then what? Like, yo, Manny had them records, man. Like, if, man. If, if you think about it, when he left Cash Money and he went solo dolo for, it was a three year period that most Southern artists took their first single. It was Manny. Wow. Um, so you, during, during the time, I know you spoke, well, it may have been offline, but just hanging out with Juvenile, how was that? How did you even connect with I Juvenile? Mean, who, who put me on Juvie? I think it was my man Snoop from South Carolina put me on Juvie. And um, this was, what happened was, he, I had sent him some clothes right before the flooding. It was another flood down there. It wasn't Katrina. It was another one. And um, and like I said, I was always trying to uh, get with him outside of that, um, you know, just that. But every time I would try to do that, it would be something. Because like I said, he had a studio right outside of, I don't want to say, I don't put his part, but you know what I'm saying? So it was like that. But I used to always tell him, like, yo, bro, I just got to get with me. I used to, because he was one of the few producers I couldn't get in touch <laughs> with. I used to love Manny, bro. I used to love that dude, bro. I, I For something about his sound. Yeah, I know you always was telling I used to always it. argue with y'all about yeah, that. I uh, argue with other producers about that. I'd be like, yo, Manny is the one. I don't know. Maybe, and maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just preference, right? Because, you know, everybody has a sound. Now, Manny a bad boy. Um, when you think about just the musical movements now, because I know we're going to go back to the close, mm -hmm. but just the music now, where it sits, where it stands in the, in the New York and New Jersey area, what's going on up here with the music, man? Yo, Let's man. be real, I, man. I'll be honest with you. 100%. I'll be honest with you, bro. Like, to me, and I'm not, I, maybe I'm old, but like, I just, it's hard because at that time, think about it, when you called me about Wayne versus Ross, Ross at that yeah. time, we were going lyric for lyric. Yeah. I can't really give you lyrics now. Like, I can't really give you quotables Nothing off of artists. Nothing out here. Can you give me a quotable from a rapper? No, no, no I'm not going to That's what I'm saying, because um, it's cadence. It's, it's a certain sound. It's melodic now. You know, Glorilla might have had the hardest song last year. And I'm, yo. And I'm not being. Did you hear what I just said? I heard, uh, yo. 
Y'all interview Glorilla yet? Not yet, but I'm just telling you, she might have had the hardest song last year. Yo, I mean, if you think about it, if you give me a, a, a certain sound, I can go, I'm doing bus talk rap, and we going to the snap. I got the stick in the bag. I'm in the, yo, what's the difference? And I'm not, I'm not knocking. That's just the sound. I'm just, I, you I'm just trying to figure out somebody who had a big song last year. Anybody else you could think of that? Cause I'm talking 2022. That had a big song last year. <sighs> I mean, if if we if we're gonna I mean, be honest, the if we're gonna be honest, right? And if you're gonna be honest about the sound that me and you were accustomed to, because to me it shifted major. Yeah, it definitely shifted. If you think about it, the only one that really keeps the older sound alive, and I'm not giving him credit, it's just that he has the artist that's willing to do the records with him. It's kind of like Khaled, right? So he'll bring a Jay Z, a Nas. Uh, a Ross and let them do that lyrical thing over more recent sounding music. You understand where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, to me, if you are in a car, unless you're like really young, like your children age, right? And y'all driving from Texas to New Orleans and all new the, the new hip hop is playing. How do you know the difference between Lil Baby, this one, that one? They all have this similar cadence. It's all a similar. It's all a similar rhyme flow. It's all a similar cadence. To me, the only like new generation that has a different type of cadence was the Migos compared to them, because the Migos are just stacked, right? I think, uh, 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 and then, you know what I'm saying. So, I, I, like I said, I, it's hard. Like I try to get into it, and I'm not saying that it's whack at all, because that's what the generation dictates. Who would have ever thought that, you know? Rap would have went from black power to gangster rap, from gangster rap to what we call um, jiggy or opulent rap, right? Meaning my chain, my cars, and then now it's just grimy, 808, and just, you know, you just melodically talking. Let me ask you this. It's been 26 years since uh, Biggie uh, mm -hmm. was murdered, mm -hmm. um, but I was on the internet last night, mm -hmm. and I see this cat out of Mississippi mm -hmm. who, who, who sings lyrics of Juicy, and they're saying, allegedly, that he had that song before Biggie had that song. No, I haven't heard I'm just, Oh, that. man, I'll show it to you in a minute. It's crazy. So I don't know because of the way technology is if somebody went and made that a thing mm -hmm. or if it's a real legitimate you know, thing because... Uh, even Biggie sang the song down in Mississippi and, and, and back up, you know, but it's mm -hmm. a thing where, and I got to let you hear, man, because this would come up with something like that and just make it up out of the blue. Is that what internet stage is? Is that where we at? Everything now is clout chasing, man. Everything. You, listen, you get that blue check by you, even though now you can buy it. Yeah, everything I see is everybody every, buy That's why I don't even be tripping Everything is clout chasing. Everything is, yo, I want to be followed. I want to be seen. And then, yo, I, that's just where culture is at. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm, I'm glad to see y'all do what y'all do organically. Yeah, we try. And on my channel, I don't care about viewership. I'm just doing the work of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking to these ladies and these dudes. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about it. One, I don't, because like I was telling my man Obsession, it's like, yo, I if it, if it was old school rappers that I dealt with, I could do that all day long. But then... If they come to me like we and them then have like a, a real relationship, then I'm just like, I'm good on you too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. I'm I'm good on that. That's why with me, it's like when I see you guys, I root for y'all because it's organic and y'all really just and you came out of nowhere with it. But you knew me like before yeah, and I it's ever organic. Done this, so. And it's organic. And it's organic. Yeah. We just like I said, when I when I pulled up on the scene, Kobe hit and I'm like I gotta do something to make sure Yo, people pay attention to my store that was, that you know what, what I'm saying I'm like if doing. I don't do this I ain't gonna stay in these people living room you're not so and then when I was did doing. this it was like okay but then it took off it was like dang this some I man people call me literally NFL players call me my Dope. wife can attest it was like E man you should have been doing that man you that you fit that whole criteria bro it's like you a boss I said <laughs> dang really they, they rock with thank you man but I yeah, just yeah, really cause you a Boss, I got, hey man, I got to get Rick Ross on here for show. Boss. <laughs> yes, so I, like, like you, when I first like think about you know the time when when you was traveling and stuff, mm -hmm. you would learn about factoring. But I want to mm -hmm. go back to uh, convertible mm -hmm. Burt right mm -hmm. quick. Go back to it. Y'all had put some people. I think I seen two chain in that thing. Yeah, I uh, seen some people. Tell me how y'all got these different okay, artists so in in the clothing. If if the artist came from. If the artist came from certain, like, uh, I would give pieces to Cool, and I would give, like, to, like, Young Chris, Freeway. I remember um, 
I don't. I, I don't know. I think, but I one of my good. I consider him a good friend to this day. He don't speak to me. I don't know. But my man Droopy E Forty Son. I okay. used to always love. I used to love. Me and Droopy used to talk on you know all times and I. I used to try to like put him with East Coast art and some artists. He he worked with Young Chris. He worked with Free. Um, um, but um, yeah, like I I. I would do the North thing, like the North and the city. And then one thing I would do, I remember I told you, I used to travel with the um, the core DJs. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Tony Neal and his people. And then through the core DJs, I met the fleet DJs. And through the fleet DJs, I met, um, it's the other one, El Nice, Future Star DJs. And um, so I would give it to radio programmers and give it to that people, right? I used to try to infiltrate you know, at that time you young, so you just feel like, you know, like this is my time. And this, like, yo, I'm telling, I, I tell people, I was talking to young Chris manager Hassan, and we were talking about the Kanye documentary. I was like, yo, you know how many of those scenes we were right there? Like, it's crazy because at that time it wasn't cool to be on camera like that. It just wasn't. Yeah. So you like when you think about stuff like that, and you t like that's how I know I missed the boat. You man, know what I'm you saying? know, you just spoke on Kanye. I, I was in Vegas a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, man, I interviewed Malik Youssef, man. And oh, Malik they, Youssef, yeah, yeah they I came up with, him. yeah, the spoken I, word brother. Yeah, yeah. I, interviewed, I interviewed him, man, it was a dope interview, man. I never seen that coming. I talked to him the night before last, like. How did you uh, get with Malik? Man, he's my, not my the, partner, he ain't never oh, did partner. nothing. Yeah, my, he don't, I'm telling you, I told you about how these doors keep me, popping over, Malik, man. Because Malik, one of them dudes, He like, don't even do it. Right, he Malik is one, yeah, Malik one of them dudes where you like either in that mix in Chicago, or you just don't, you know what I'm saying? He rocked with Boss Talk, man. Like, I'm telling you, man, these doors that keep popping open, what you gonna see people like yourself on here different people that you wouldn't normally see bro boost <laughs> and that's why I think makes it different and then we hear we, we hear we in we, we out here in New York New Jersey kicking it so you know and we don't want to pick up and come to you too we don't have no problem pulling up on you we've been pulling up pull up so now that we pull up we pull up like this pull up you <laughs> boost but you know so I'm, I'm I'm really like like I really 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 I admire you, bro, because of the things that you did in this game, man. Mm. Let's talk about that brand that you, you the, the one man you talked about. Was it, uh, man, Paradise? Passport. No, passport. That's passport. mine. Yeah, that's mine. Let's so, talk about Passport, man. Passport. I had, I had um, me and, uh, and another guy, um, another guy, me and, and my, my man from Convertible Bird, not Matt, but our other, my other man, um, I had said to him, like, yo, Cause I knew Matt was going through something at the time, and I was like, "Yo, I got this thing in my head, bro." Cause I like I, I said I travel the world with you, and you know he definitely travels the world. I, I well, I, I won't say necessarily more than me at that time. He definitely was because I was on my. I ain't gonna lie, financially, you know what I went through at that time. Yeah, so yeah. Financially, everything. I was on my backside, right? And I was just like, "Bro, man, I just got this idea." And I and I was just like, yo, I want to be the first at that time. So you figure 2016, 2016, when I first started like developing it in my mind. I remember. I was just like, yo, I just want to be the first brand like on a streetwear level for black people, not just black people, but like that from the from the black side of the game that can be found in Switzerland and Hong Kong and you know, because I these are places that I wanted, you know, that I, that I've been to before anybody was thinking about it, right? So he he loved the idea, and I, yo, at first it was whack, meaning like, this, not stuff that people seen, like stuff that I was just coming up with. Like I was kind of like blending airline culture with it, and then I was like, nah. Right? And then I was just like, and I came up with like everything, right? This whole concept of like, the world is yours, you just don't know it yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, and I just tell people like, the only way to change it is you gotta see it. If you don't see nothing, you don't know what to change, right? And then um, I came with, you know, some stuff. I'll never get the first crew necks we put out. Had it done in China. So what I did was I said, okay, since it's an international concept, I took foreign cars and blended with my talk. So I took the Ferrari and put, uh, straight horsing around on the back of the shirt. Wow! And then I put, uh, then I took a crew neck and had the Lambo sign that 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 trying that pyramid boom in the center of the chest with the bull, and on the back it said on my bullshit. And wow. then and, and then uh, and on the front I took one of your Bible verses in your book, 
the rich shall inherit the earth, and I no the the meek shall inherit the earth, and I said the rich shall inherit the earth, and it's and then on the back it said international success. Wow, and them joints blew out of stores. I remember having to go in the middle of the night into the storage place where I was shipping out of. Like, I'm talking about in the middle of Harlem, it's tired. Boom, 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 reorders. Boom, 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 reorders. Um, the t-shirts I did was crazy. I'll never get the first one. We did the grind hard to find God. <laughs> the niggas love it. And then I did uh I did um um uh the Young Yacht Club. They loved that one because it said navigate your way to success. And I did the uh um oh the the boys club sign, you know, like this. Mm-hmm. And it said, make yours, take yours, hand over fist. And I remember I yo, we yo. So and, how do you come up like like how will you come yo, up with all it, the slogans? Just is it was just coming to you or yo, when you see what I'm about to drop coming soon, man, I'm talking some real like now that I got that fervor back and I got my paper all the way up. Yeah, you done brought me some glasses. And the it's difference, sixteen hundred. The difference and the difference is here. the difference is now is right that, the difference is now is that I'm going to do it differently. Like, I'm not even going to my market. Like, I'm going to be in Stockholm with it. I'm going to be in Paris with it. I'm going to be in Amsterdam with it. And I'm going to show other people, not my people, other people. And then it's like, yo, let y'all come when y'all ready. I'm, wow. I'm going to, I'm, listen. You're going to do your thing. Yeah, so, now it's going to be different. I, I just, like, like when you, when you, Come up in an era like we came up, man. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, I understand the people before me how they was like, man, back in my days, because I started seeing the way that things were and the way things are now, and I started really understanding that change is really, really inevitable, mm-hmm. and it's something that you can't turn back time. But you rem- reminisce those things, like the convertible bird on two chains, or, mm-hmm. or or just y'all brand basically the stitch. That stitch, you yo, don't really listen, yo, bro. That stitch, yo, we is did, different, uh, bro. Yo, that was I always tell Matt. The favorite T-shirt, me, <laughs> the favorite, my favorite T-shirt, we did. It was that whole capsule, though. We did this whole capsule called the Double Cup. Uh, um, we called the Double Cup Race. It was Double Cup Racing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we was just in. I'll never forget it. Me and Matt was in a mold, then boy. We did the um, the Double Cup joint. We did winner on the front. I remember. And on the back it said, oh no, on the, the down the sleeve it said, your bitch love it. <laughs> and we did sloppy toppy on the highway. Y'all did the Mason Dixon line. We did the Mason Dixon line. We did. Um, I'm trying to think because we had a. We did the outlaw. The outlaws. I remember that. We did that one. Um, yo, what? we, me and Matt. Yo, that double cup one to this day. I'm telling you, like the coloration. And we did the La Flame shirt. The La Flame shirt. Yes. Oh yeah. Yo, we were boy. Man, we were awesome. It was At a that di- time, different time. We were awesome, bro. And like me and Matt was talking about that the other day. He said to himself, he can't be mad that we were early. I said, that's just what it was, man. And exactly, exactly what it was. What What do you say to to when you see? And I'm drop. Dr- I'm jumping all the way to another subject. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going into hip hop again. We just talking, uh, bro. What do you say to those to, when you see the artists is dropping dead? Like I hear you had what it, was it Chinks or what was it? What, 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 who was it out here that that passed away? French Montana's guy. That was Chinks Drugs, yeah. but that was a while ago. Okay, he got but killed. still, he got murdered, I'm, I'm gonna keep going. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep going because you know already hip hop is 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 you see these young. Is like uh, what was what's the other boy down there in Houston? Was it Takeoff? Takeoff. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, that was sad, then you, then you was look at the other the guy that was stabbed in the neck. Uh, it, it, in L.A., it was a couple of them in L.A. cases. You see Big Scar, who, who he's in the South. One of Gucci Man artists died yeah, off of uh, 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 what's that? What's that drug? They they fentanyl. Plant, fentanyl, fentanyl you know fentanyl. Yeah, and and like that's what they you know allegedly. I'm just saying. What do you say to all of these? Because really, back in the day, were big when Pac and Biggie right. did that. It, it was big, man. And, and but now it's happening to where you can almost gangster boo die. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. I, I'm just get, I wouldn't even get. I was trying to get her pregnant, man. No, I'm just crazy. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> so, man, I'm just saying, man. What do you say to 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 the way you see hip hop falling apart when it comes uh, to how hip-hop, people die? Hip hop is the most dangerous job on the planet. I hear that. That's Boosie what it is. is one of the guys that always say that? that. Yeah, I, it, it's the truth, though. It's the most dangerous job on the planet, especially look. 
with jobs come lifestyle, right? So if I was a garbage man, I'd probably come home smelling like trash. Wow. If you if you're a rapper and the and the and the culture is sex, money, drugs, I mean, yeah. Back in the day, the Jack Boys was jacking the dope dealers and all kind yep. of and hitting the dope houses. Yep. Yep. It's the same type mentality of just going toward. Maybe it's because they're in the entrepreneurship. You got to understand too. It goes back to what me and Mister Jamaica was talking about. You got to you got to understand something. I'm gonna teach y'all something today, right? So you know, I'm a psychop. My new thing is two things. I only study money and psychology, right? Psychology is the way to have these conversations, and in psychology. There's something out of the Bible which has made its way into, it's really, it's really economics, but it's, it's also a form of psychology, which is the Matthew effect. To those with everything, all is given. To those with nothing, all is taken. You know what that means? It basically means everyone loves a winner. But it also means is that what happens when, if your raps, right, is talking about the bread you got, the cars you got, the women you got, but the person that's buying it or streaming it ain't got nothing. But then he might see you at the gas station and might just want to flick and you like, uh, I don't want no flick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that going to do to him? Then it's like, damn, I, su I made you rich. And you might, just be in, you might just be having a bad day, but, you, but in the back of this dude's mind, it's like, yo, my girl listen to you. I'm, I'm the reason why you wearing those jeans, those sneakers, driving these cars. That Yo, it's the Matthew effect, right? It's like, yo, so the person on the bottom is room for the person at the top. But then when he gets to that person, it's like, yeah, you, you on the bottom. Wow. I, and, and I think that's sometimes that, that translates. Because, yo, listen, <laughs> the wolves going to eat. The wolves going to eat. The wolves going to eat, bro. I want to ask you about, uh, there are some different also rappers mm -hmm. that you know this thing snitching is, is on an all time high <laughs> because anytime Yo. we back in the days people didn't talk about people no one, snitching yeah, on no the dead you know like what I mean that. on the right. dead what do you think about that I'm asking you that I'm, I'm trying to understand like when you see somebody say they snitching on uh -huh. the dead uh -huh. what do you think about that? if a person uh, I said uh, Boosie is a legend that T.I. said that, hey, man, you know, his cousin basically uh, died and he and he said it himself on the show that on his show on uh, Expeditiously. Uh -huh. He said that basically he told on his cousin, but his cousin was dead. He went ahead and told say it was all it was his because mm -hmm. he was dead already. And it, and it would basically get him to where he wouldn't have to deal with the issue at the time. How do you feel about somebody telling on the dead? Yo, see, you and I both know street culture and street rules varies from city to city state to state bro like okay so listen i'm a type of dude i i know how niggas is like if you think if you think a man is going to give up his riches his women if if a dude is in jail and he's used to getting vagina every night from all types of women, driving any car he want, wearing anything he want, traveling, and he gonna give it up for his crew? Do you, how, what's the odds of that? How many are really gonna do that? I get it, but I, you, you know what I'm saying? You answer my I, question, I, I, I'm answering I'm your question. I'm trying to understand, like, I, I, like what happened listen, here? You and I both know, okay, for example, if, hmm. I don't. That might get me killed. All right. If, um, <laughs> I'm gonna say this. I'm trying to. I'm trying to use a real life example of like trying to show you. I just don't see. I remember when I was in Shanghai. It was me, my man Los, and and my man, my my former partner with Passport. And my man Los said something dope. He was like, "Ain't he said ain't no such thing as snitching." He said, "He said yo, everybody gonna snitch now now." The person I just mentioned, both of them, the, both of them dudes are, are certified, suited and booted. You understand where I'm coming from? So everybody gonna snitch. Is there, was I think it? I don't think necessarily everybody is going to snitch. I think they're going to put themselves in their best interest if they if they because how many now mind you, I would say this. I would say this. Somebody. In that circle, they they stood tall. So maybe 
You know, but like what he was saying, though, was basically is like, you know how hard it is not to. You know what I'm saying? So Boosie might just be a, just a real stand up guy. And, and yo, think about it. The street rule made him drop a whole project that he was having with T.I. Yeah. So that in itself, maybe he's just that much of a stand up guy. Or maybe they're going to bring it out here in a minute. And it's gonna you know what I'm crazy. saying? But if you listen, if if you yourself, because you now you have Prevy to all these rappers on your end, especially in the South, right? That's why I was trying to um, put you with another this other dude. But you you have Prevy to interviewing them. And I guarantee you, if you ask 20 of them, you might have a 50-50 answer from them. Because like, yo, you don't like how many of them dudes is going to relinquish that lifestyle? I just don't see a lot of that. I don't see a lot of men just like, yo. Well, we see what happened with uh, my boy, man, uh, Young Thug. You know, when, when you think about, like, the RICO charge, that, that it was on a state level, but they end up getting a RICO, and then you see Gunners released and all the people that was right. locked up with it right. released. It kind of confirms what you're saying. Right. I, I think, um, I just think that, um, I think that, I, bro, how many... You know, up here where I'm at in New York, New Jersey, you snitching is like is, is second hand. They they gonna do it. It's on an all time high. It's at an all time high, and they gonna do it because. And if you think about it, if you listen to a lot of dudes, um, um, what you call uh, their explanation is always yo. That man was sleeping with my woman, or this yo, they getting my money now. Yo, I, I don't see how how do, I just don't see how most how most of these dudes are going to stand tall when it's their lifestyle, bro, on the line. That I just think that they like, yo, man, I'm a, they, I think they say I'm going to roll the dice and I'm going to take my chances out on the street. And don't forget, let's, let's not forget this. We let someone, not we, they let someone infiltrate the culture in 6 9 Couldn't rap, just a weird looking dude, right? made snitching a household activity came out called himself a rat all this stuff you know what i'm saying and then he think about this he sold you the poison and then arrested you for for buying it but then also let me ask you this since you you went to six nine being that he's from up here in new york i mean yep. you you this is hypothetical you yep. you on the block. You you see him on yep. the block. He hanging out, mm -hmm. and he like, man, come on, man, Dre, let's 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 let's, let's just chum it up. Let's let's hang out. Let's go do some partying together, man. You my guy, man. Let's fly out. Let's do this. Are you the guy that's gonna right now? Because people have said, I I heard, uh, was it Akon? He went back and did locked up uh, uh -huh. with him. Uh -huh. uh, it was uh, and that's a money move for him. And Wack One Hundred, you know, basically say he still rock with him. Like where do. Andre stand when it comes down to six nine. Could you be that guy's best no, friend? I couldn't. But listen, Why? I live in it. Listen, I I'm up here. So if you understand that in these places, whether it be the X, whether it be Brooklyn, whether it be Harlem, right? Like you gotta understand, like you're that man promoted something that is our demise, and then when it was time to stand tall with it. It was like you, her, her. This man was adding people that was, he was implicating people not even in the, in the case. He never said, he never, he, he, we knew what he was when he came in the game. That's we my it. point. That's my point. We knew he wasn't street That's like that. That's my point. But we up, then why can't we, why can't we support our rappers like that without having to have him infiltrate your, your culture? I can't, listen, if I was on this podcast right now, I can't go bing, 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 bing. And act like I'm a ring, I'm a merengue singer, <laughs> right? Right. I can't go. Like I can't do that. And then, and then look, look, look. Be with them in Texas, right? With the can we do that? No. So we gonna we gonna embrace him. We gonna let him come with purple, green, and orange hair, and go. Like we gonna do that? Yo, that wasn't cool. So, and then you're promoting our demise. You promoting something that kids get killed over for nothing, bro. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. The one thing you and I both know, and when you go to LA, right, 
I remember sometime, this is before checking in was checking in. I remember when I used to be, or well, I still am, a man of the Lord, and I had a couple women out there. I used to like really tell them, take me to the hood, right? I used to want to talk to everybody, right? I wanted to hear the culture. You know what I'm saying? And I remember one dude telling me like, you know how I feel? You got the bad chick that go to Dorsey and you go here and you in this neighborhood and he and that her in that neighborhood and you see and the only time you can kind of like kick it with her is at the gas station because you can't cross over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People really like were dying over that and you got to do come on, bro. Wow. Like, think, just think about that, though. No, no, no. It's real, real spill. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, street cats are supposed to keep it street. You yeah. got it right. Like, I can't. Listen, as much as I be in the trenches, dudes know I right, drain on smoke, drain on drink. That ain't him. And I be in the trenches. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, so, you know me. I, I'm solo dolo. You understand? I was just in London by myself. I, I'm, I'm solo dolo. Anywhere you find me, I will be there by myself. You know what I'm saying? But the point I'm making is, is like, yo, I just don't, yo, I just don't see it. Like, I think some guys, like, you see your whole life and your career flash. And, and yo, I, I think that's why, listen, there has to be a psychology behind it. There has to be a reason why they separate you in these rooms when they're interviewing you, right? Yeah. Right? Good cop, bad cop. Yo, he said this. Why, you, you don't know what he just said. Oh, he said that. He don't know what you just said. That's real. You understand? So they they play that against you. But what is this we're dealing with nowadays? Like you, when you look at the Wack One Hundred and Jay Prince and just the way that people are mm -hmm. are doing each other on the internet, is mm -hmm. it is this thing, man, something to where you know? Is it something to where you can gauge it on? Oh, that's he's just talking, or or is this a thing that every any time you say something, it can and will be used against you? Yo. The tongue is mightier than the sword, man. And you got to understand that. So you got to look at things from, we live in a sensitive time, bro. And and like, so for example, I can't come to Dallas disrespecting the culture and the people like if New York, New Jersey is better than Dallas and not expect to get them things loaded up in me. Wow. Right? Just like when I'm in LA, I know how to move in LA. You know what I'm saying? Just like when I'm in Philly. Like, one thing I do is like I practice the slang in each of these places. So if I'm in Philly, if I know I'm in a certain area, I know how to talk that Philly shit. If I'm in Chicago in a certain area, I know how to talk that shy shit. You know what I'm saying? I do that for a reason. It's saying like in, in like I was talking to my man from Atlanta yesterday. <laughs> I was just flipped it off. Like, what up? What? What up there? What? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we used yeah, to yeah. do that. You know what I'm saying? I remember Matt he was like, Trey, you want to get your ass whipped talking like that. But like, yo, <laughs> we we learn, you know, you learn, you know, how to move in these areas. Yo, my man, Chilio, he's still popular in Atlanta. My man, Chilio, he used to say to me, and this was right, this was around about the time the Dirty Wars and all that. I used to be in a car with him, and he go, yo, Dre. Now, he's from Pittsburgh initially, but he lived in New York. He lived in New Jersey, but he lived in Atlanta now. He's like a big influencer down there, especially with the young cats. And Chili used to be like, now this was like 06, 07. Chili used to be like, yo, you can't bring that New York shit down here, bro. He used to always say that. He'd be like, they don't like that fast talking, slick, taking. He's like, yo, you could be New York, but you better not, you know, try to influence that on, on these Atlanta. He used to always tell me that. He'd be like, yo, I had to learn how to. He said, yo, he said, I ain't always talk this slow. He's like, I had to learn how to talk like that, yo. You know, I had to learn how to be Atlanta. And then he taught me that. Like, he taught me how to maneuver in those areas. Man, I, I just, I, like I said, um, um, I, I really understand that, that you know, these these times are different than what we what we, Yo, what we, totally what we did. You totally know, coming different, up, bro. And, totally and the different. internet done flipped this whole game on them, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to link up with you? I would be in your daughter's, no. Um, <laughs> 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 no, nah, um. Look up uh, my YouTube channel is just my name A N D R E B O Y C E, Andre Boyce. Um, Instagram Patrick Passport fifteen, and I'm about to start uploading. Not this month, but like next month when um when I go abroad, I think I'm gonna go to Amsterdam in April. Um, I'll start uploading some new product too. I got some stuff being sampled out in China. China's about to fully open, so I sent some stuff over there that I'm about to really get back in. I've just been on the low, because like I told you, I've been really just getting my paper all the way up. 
Wow. You know? But, you know, um, anything else, though, before we go? Because I want to really, because you want to, what else you want to do? Oh, it was, uh, it was uh, where my hat at, man. I already know something. Oh, what you else you got for right me? Here, bro. Let me see what we got here. I got to uh, show them the hat, see. man. Even, there it I, is right there. Passport Global, guys. Y'all got to understand, this boss talk, man. We got to show love, man. Look, at, look, look, man. Y'all got to tap into this passport. This my guy. You know I'm a clothes guy. You, you're if you watch the guy. show, if you watch the show, you already know. You already uh, know. You already know if you watch the show. You know passport. You know you look in the back and you see clothes, man. This right here is passport, man. I got to show it, man. Let me look and see what I'm dealing with here. What? Man, Ill industrial that's the, 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 okay. that's the old sewing machine. That's some European. Wow. Thing. But um, my grandma had one. Like yeah, that. The industrial the sewing machine. The there you the go, bins, man. That's hard, man. Thank you so much, man. man thank you, man. I got glasses, man. man. Got me a you know starter pack. Y'all Yo, understand I got, what I got, I got him, the starter pack I, I right here. I got him the Dallas starter kit. We just got to give him the shag. <laughs> we just got to give him that Texas shag. Man, man, thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk, man. Blessing me. I deserve all these blessings, man. I'm, I got the shades. I got the hat. Man, I've been blessed, man. This only only when you've been in the streets and you on you on boss level that this kind of stuff eat. happen, man. Streets gotta Say, eat. man, listen, streets man, check eat. it, man. Hey, man, streets it's been another eat. great segment, man. And streets I know y'all have heard eat. me say this every time, but it's been another great segment. Here you of, go, Miss Jamaica. What? Miss Jamaica got blessed. Streets oh gotta man. Eat. But Say. listen, uh, yo, listen, man. If you want. Like I said, I'll go down there, man. I want to have, I really want to have a, sh uh, uh, not a lot. We can do it because obviously me and Mr. Maker have two different um, vantage points. Which is good. So I would love to come down there and hold service, hold church service and <laughs> take up a collection down there at the store and, and, and have a little diatribe Yeah, because I could have, I, I, I could have went in a lot harder. I would on love you. for you to go in a lot harder. But, go in a lot harder but, right now. No, I keep getting looks from on the other side no, of the no. table. No, the I, oh, no, no, no. We, Listen, I just want to get through family. all my subjects. You're amongst family, so go ahead. Hold on. No, go. no, no, no. We're going to leave that for when you come to Dallas. No, no I, will, right. I will. Give me a pre uh -uh. Give me a taste uh -uh. of you going in hard on me. Man. No, that's okay. Why not? I got it. Hey, it's Yo, been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 with a Listen, listen, ladies.